On November 24th, 1992, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was released for the Sega Genesis in North America. Backed by great marketing, incredible hype, and just being a really good game, it became an immediate hit, and solidified Sonic's spot as an entertainment icon. The game improved on the first in so many ways. It added Tails, Super Sonic, and the Seven Chaos Emeralds. It features one of the best zone lineups of any game in the series. It has a wonderful soundtrack, among so much more. While Sonic 1 has been released more often and was an overall bigger success than Sonic 2, the legacy of this game is perhaps even more interesting than the first. And still just like that game, Sonic 2 has also seen countless re-releases throughout its history. I mean, I don't blame them. You don't just make a game like Sonic 2 and only release it once. Sega have certainly made the most out of this game, making it one of Sonic's most popular and best-selling titles in the series. And so, today we'll be taking a look at the many releases of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, as well as going over various pieces of obscure info and trivia about the game. We're talking ports, re-releases, prototypes, and more. And with all of that said, let's begin! Following the success of Sonic 1, Sega needed a sequel, and fast. Somehow, the team was able to create a more than worthy follow-up in little over a year. There were hardships, sure, but Sonic 2 shipped on time and was in stores on November 24th, 1992. That day happened to fall on a Tuesday, so it was known by Sega's marketing as Sonic Tuesday. This date is actually referenced in-game. That's how planned out it was. To access the game's debug mode, you go to the sound test and play the sounds 19921124. The 24th was the day the game was released in North America and Europe, but over in Asian territories like Japan and Korea, it came out a few days earlier on the 21st. Unfortunately, that was not a Tuesday, so it doesn't make for a good pun. The Korean version was released by Samsung, making it one of the more unique original releases of the game. Sonic Tuesday was a very big deal at the time, as it was long planned to be the day the game would launch globally. Nowadays, it's common for a game to be released everywhere on the same day, but back in 1992, that was almost unheard of and signified how big of a deal this game was. You can actually still find a few physical items related to the campaign today, which all make for great collectibles nowadays. And so, the first release of the game was of course the Genesis and Mega Drive release. Well, actually, technically not. The first version of Sonic 2 that was released was actually the 8-bit version. The Master System version first came out in Europe on October 16th, 1992, and the Game Gear version came out over there on October 29th. The rest of the world would get them throughout November. Even in North America, this version was released before the 16-bit version. However, this video is focusing on the 16-bit version of the game, so let's move on. Along with its original release and its many international releases, the game would see several re-releases on the Genesis itself. Sonic 2 handles stubborn stains, embarrassing bald spots, no problem. It even slices and dices, makes thousands of julienne fries. You've all seen this commercial, right? It advertises a new Genesis console bundle that came with not just Sonic 1, but Sonic 2 as well. Following its release, the game was included in a few system bundles, and copies of the game that came in these bundles were produced with cases and labels that stated not for resale, as they weren't intended for retail release. However, it seems like this is definitely the most common cartridge of the game. Along with Sonic 1 and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Sonic 2 was included in Sonic Compilation, a three-pack released in Europe in July of 1995. It was later released in North America in 1997 as Sonic Classics. Okay, to consider this one its own release is a bit of a stretch, but Sonic & Knuckles was released on October 18th, 1994, and brought with it Lock-On Technology. This was mainly implemented so you could play through Sonic 3 and Sonic & Knuckles as one game as was originally intended. But, as a bonus, if you put Sonic 2 on top of Sonic & Knuckles, you'd unlock the gem known as Knuckles the Echidna in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, allowing you to play through the game as Knuckles two years after it was originally released. Looking back, how insane is that? This was surely a monumental feature for its time. Knuckles didn't even exist when Sonic 2 was being developed, but now you could officially play as him in the game. This feature was also planned for Sonic 1, but unfortunately, that game's color palette didn't play too nicely with Knuckles, so Knuckles and Sonic 1 never came to be on the Genesis, outside of fan work. Now, before we move away from the Genesis, there's one more variant of the game that needs to be mentioned. As a thank you to those who helped with the marketing plans behind Sonic Tuesday, Sega of America sent out these beautiful gold-colored cartridges to those who helped make it happen. For example, this one was given to and owned by Al Nielsen, the former head of global marketing at Sega of America. These came framed and had unique plaques for those who received them. This one reads, Presented to Al Nielsen for your excellent marketing program for Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the world's best-selling video game of 1992. This was very much deserved. Without the work of him and the rest of the marketing team, Sonic 2's launch wouldn't have been nearly as memorable or successful. Without a doubt, these Golden Sonic 2 carts are the rarest release of the game, as they technically weren't really released. They're essentially trophy pieces that were internally gifted to the team for their unforgettable work. We don't know how many of these were made, and most of them haven't even been documented, but they are oh so cool.
The game's first non-Genesis release came in 1993, as part of Sega's Mega Tech and Mega Play line of arcade boards. That's right, Sonic 2 saw an arcade release. The Mega Tech release features a timer that is constantly counting down, and whenever that timer reaches zero, you needed to insert more credits to bump it up by three minutes. On the Mega Play version, there isn't a timer at all, but to make the game harder, all extra life monitors were replaced by rings, and the special stages have been removed as well. In these versions, there is also no way to play through the game as anything but Sonic and Tails together. They're not super interesting, but given their additional difficulty, both of these make for a great way to play through the game with new challenges. The first home console re-release of Sonic 2 was fittingly on Sega's next console, the Sega Saturn, as part of Sonic Jam. Sonic 2's inclusion in Jam was essentially the same as Sonic 1. There weren't many substantial additions to the game itself, it was just a great way to play through the game on Sega's next console, and it did have some extra modes. Today though, I'd rather not focus on the Saturn version of Sonic Jam. Instead, let's talk about the other Sonic Jam. So. The GameCom was a fifth-generation handheld device released by Tiger Electronics in 1997. It displays only in black and white, is extremely bulky and slow, but it did have a touchscreen. Somehow, they were able to sign a deal with Sega to release a version of Sonic Jam for their system. And this was the result. How does it compare to the Saturn version? Well, the GameCom wasn't exactly as powerful as the Saturn, or even the Genesis. This was really just a flawed concept from the start. For some reason, Sonic 1 just isn't here, but Sonic 2, 3, and Knuckles are. Well, okay, not really. Sure, there are short, truncated versions of each game where you only play through a few levels, and those levels don't really resemble anything from the originals outside of visuals and enemies, but, uh, hey, you can play as all three characters. You can even find a special stage based off of Sonic 3's Blue Spheres, but since this is in black and white, you're tasked with finding Black Spheres. Technically speaking, this was advertised as a collection of levels from Sonic's past hits and not full games. It really is just a few levels. You can play through the entire game in under an hour. This is nothing like the Saturn version, it's not a collection of Sonic games. However, the main menu does say game selection and Sonic 2 is represented here so it counts. Honestly, it's strange this was even called Sonic Jam. Not only because the box art uses Sonic R artwork for some reason, but truthfully, yeah, it's just a few levels from each game put together. I can't believe this is official, it reminds me way too much of those pirated Game Boy Sonic games. Apart from in-game assets and art, this is nothing like the Sonic Jam most people know of. Though, believe it or not, even this bizarre release has some interesting unused content. In the final release, only those three games are included, but this screenshot that originates from a promotional booklet that was included with the GameCom clearly shows that at some point, a version of Sonic 3D Blast was considered for the system. This would have been hugely ambitious for the system. You've seen how it handles 2D Sonic games? Imagine a 3D one. Maybe this was just a mock-up. In pretty much all of the promotional material for this game, they used mock-ups or prototype screenshots instead of ones from the final release. Take a look at the back of the game's box. None of these screenshots are from the actual game. This one features an early unused knuckle sprite in a more detailed Emerald Hill. This one shows Sonic in a different looking Mushroom Hill, and this one asks you to collect blue spheres which we all know is inaccurate. At least it's not asking you to grab blue balls. There are a few more early screenshots floating around, such as this one showing off a game comified version of Sonic 3's opening cutscene, as well as one of its title screen, neither of which are in the final game. It's really weird so much of the promo material doesn't line up with what was released. It's probably a case of false advertising, but maybe the developers lost a much more completed version of the game sometime late in development and had to quickly rush together what we see today. In any case, it's pretty impressive that this, a Sonic game for the Tiger Gamecom, was even made. Shoutouts to the developers. I'm sure making this was a very stressful time. Sonic 1 was released for the Sega Dreamcast in a not-so-great collection called Sega Smash Pack Volume 1. Despite the name, there was never a Volume 2 for the Dreamcast, but there actually were more collections released under this branding on other systems and devices. One simply titled Sega Smash Pack was released for the Game Boy Advance and features Sonic Spinball. Before the Dreamcast release, the series of collections started on the PC, with the first volume coming out in February 1999. A second pack containing Sega Puzzle Games was also released in 1999, but the third PC release, which was titled Sega Smash Pack 2, was released in the year 2000 and featured Sonic 2. Curiously, none of the PC releases contained Sonic 1. The emulation in this release is pretty spot on, apart from the sound, which has always been notorious when it comes to Sega Genesis re-releases. Besides that, it was a pretty solid way to play Sonic 2 on your computer, especially for 2000 standards. Additionally, Sega Smash Pack 2 was included in a 4-pack of Sonic PC games called the Sonic Action 4-pack, and it was also included in a twin pack that contained the two main volumes in one release. 
Moving into the 2000s, that's where the quantity of Sonic game collections really amped up, and nearly all of them featured Sonic 2. The game was included in Sonic Mega Collection for the Nintendo GameCube, released in 2002. Sonic Mega Collection Plus, an updated version of the collection for the PS2, Xbox, and PC, features the original lineup, including Sonic 2, along with a few extras. The Xbox version of Mega Collection Plus was released in a two-pack with Super Monkey Ball Deluxe, and that game itself is basically a collection of Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2. That's some good value. A special demo of the game was included in Sonic Gems Collection. In that game's gallery, you can unlock a timed demo that starts you off at Death Egg Zone, allowing you to face the final bosses before time runs out. The blandly titled Sega Genesis Collection was released for the PS2 and PSP in 2006, with Sonic 2 being one of its 28 titles. The PSP version was later available as a downloadable game on the PlayStation Vita. Sonic PC Collection is a compilation of four Sonic computer games, with one of those being Sonic Mega Collection Plus. This was unfortunately only released in PAL regions, and was released on October 1, 2009. In 2011, to celebrate Sonic's 20th anniversary, an anniversary edition of this collection was released, containing a special mouse and mouse pad. In 2010, Sonic Classic Collection was released for the Nintendo DS. This collection contains Sonic 1 through Sonic & Knuckles. However, the games have been edited to remove certain features. Younger me was just devastated when he learned he couldn't do the Ashura glitch on his DS. At least they included Knuckles in Sonic 2. Now that we're done with collections, let's move on to some real ports. Mobile ports. In 2006, a Java port of Sonic 2 was released as part of Sega of Japan's mobile game service, Sonic Cafe. Footage of this version is pretty hard to find, but it appears to be pretty close to the original, or at least as close as 2006 Japanese phones allowed for. It even included some new features. You could save your progress, and there was also a new boss rush mode called Attack Mode. Along with that, it did feature some snazzy new assets, such as a new title screen with added effects, as well as a new logo used in promotional materials. The Sonic Cafe version of Sonic 2 is a pretty good quality, but it was only released in Japan. However, it appears it was the basis of other mobile versions of the game that were released in other territories. Introducing Sonic 2 Dash and Sonic 2 Crash. What? These two games were released in 2008, and together make a complete mobile release of Sonic 2. See, even in 2008, the game was too big to fit onto one download for most phones, so they split it up. Dash contains the first five zones, while Crash contains the remaining zones. Keep in mind, this version of the game was made for flip phones, so nowadays they're nothing amazing, but were a pretty good novelty for the time. To make things a bit more confusing, there exist multiple versions of these two games, with different versions made for the varying powers of smartphones back then. What you've been seeing so far is the more advanced version. Here's the version of Sonic 2 Dash made for lower-end phones. Yeah, this is a very poor port, but likely all they could do back then for those lower-end models. Tails is nowhere to be seen. It skipped zones and the graphics took a massive hit. The MIDI music is the least of its concerns. Clearly not the best way to play the game, but very interesting regardless. For a more accurate Sonic 2 phone experience, 2010 brought us the game for iOS devices. Released at $5.99, this version is simply an emulated ROM with touchscreen controls. Not nearly as interesting as the wonderful Java versions, but much more accurate. You know, I've always liked these assets they made for the original iOS releases of Sonic 1 and 2. They use modern Sonic art despite being classic games. These were released back when modern and classic Sonic really were just one character. These in Classic Collection were the last time Sega treated this as such. Besides the art used though, this release is pretty uninteresting. However, the original iOS port was eventually replaced by... Quickly following their fantastic remaster of Sonic 1, on December 13, 2013, the third Retro Engine Sonic remake was released, the 2013 mobile port of Sonic 2. If you already had the now obsolete 2010 version, you could download a free update that changed that simple version into this wonderful recreation. This is just as good as their Sonic 1 port, if not better. All the improvements brought to Sonic 1 have been added to Sonic 2. A widescreen display, a smooth frame rate, all three characters are playable, leaderboards, and more. Unfortunately, just like Sonic 1, this version has only been released for mobile platforms like iOS and Android. You could use an emulator to play them on your PC, and I guess stuff like Apple TV and the Amazon Fire Stick let you play them on a TV, but these are great ports, the definitive way to play these games, and yet they're still only on phones. Maybe someday they'll be brought to other platforms. Regardless, I've sunk I don't know how many hours into this version of the game. Ever since it came out, it's been my main way of playing Sonic 2. 
But among all the quality of life improvements this version adds, the real grabber of this version is that if you fell down that one pit in Mystic Cave Zone Act 2, you wouldn't fall onto spikes like in the original. Instead, you fall into the mythical Hidden Palace Zone. Sonic 2 was originally planned to be a much larger game, containing many more zones than seen in the final release. Some of these cut zones were worked on for long enough to be showcased in pre-release media, the most famous of which being Hidden Palace Zone. When the game first came out and this zone was seemingly absent, there was a ton of speculation. Was it still in the game, just hidden? It's in the name after all. Unfortunately, no. It was almost completely removed from the final game. With a cheat device, you can load yourself into what's left of it, but it's all a mess. Before it was scrapped though, a lot of work had been done on it, and the team behind this re-release somehow got approval to finally realize that work. The zone that brought decades of rumors and speculation was finally playable, and while it wasn't exactly like it was originally planned, it officially exists in a version of Sonic 2 now, and that's pretty amazing. It even has a new boss! Though, Hidden Palace has been completely reworked here. The level design is nothing like the version seen in pre-release photos and the early builds that contain it. However, if you enter a cheat code on the level select screen and select it, it'll take you to the well-named Proto Palace Zone, an alternate version of the stage that uses the unfinished layout seen in the early builds of Sonic 2. But more on that later. Before and after the Retro Engine port of Sonic 2, the game still continued to see more standard re-releases. Let's quickly go through them. On December 8th, 2008, the game was released on the Wii Virtual Console. Backbone Entertainment released an emulated version of the game for the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 as part of their Sega Vintage Collection. This release of the game surprisingly featured online play for the multiplayer as well as leaderboards. It also added achievements, all making it a bit more than just a downloadable ROM. The Xbox 360 version was released in late 2007, and the PS3 version came out in 2011. Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, also developed by Backbone, also contains the game. This was released for the Xbox 360 and PS3 in 2009. The game was also included in Sega Mega Drive Classic Collection Volume 2, another PC compilation that was released in European territories in October of 2010. There were four volumes in this series, and they were all eventually bundled together as Sega Mega Drive Classic Collection Gold Edition, which of course included Sonic 2. The game has also been released on Steam, though even today this is still just an emulated port and not the 2013 version. On October 12, 2015, 3D Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was released for the Nintendo 3DS as a downloadable title on the eShop, made by the company M2. This is just like 3D Sonic 1, once again being an enhanced version of the game with support for the 3DS's unique display. While this wasn't included in the North American Sega 3D Classic Collection, it was included in the third volume of the Japanese Physical Parallel, Sega 3D Classics Collection Volume 3, Final Stage. Also, once all three volumes were out, they were all bundled as one release. A compilation titled Sega Genesis Classics has been released for the PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch, which includes Sonic 2. On February 20th, 2020, another M2-made version of the game was released, also for the Switch, the Sega Ages branded release of Sonic 2. And just like the Sonic 1 release, this one adds tons of new features such as the drop dash from Sonic Mania. You can also play as Knuckles, which isn't always included in every release of the game. Out of the shockingly multiple ways to play Sonic 2 on just the Switch, this one is probably the best, just for the drop dash alone. Of course, there are also the many plug-and-play releases of the game, mostly by the company at games. Let's just say these vary in quality. The most interesting part of these is that for some reason on the packaging for some of these systems, they used artwork made for the fan-made Sonic 2 HD project, which I've always found amazing. This one uses the beta title screen, and I'm pretty sure that's not the official box art of Sonic 2. I'm not sure how that got by Sega, but it happened. It seems these plug-and-plays have always been a quick and cheap effort with a little input by them. The Sega Genesis Mini, on the other hand, was definitely not a cheap effort. And it has Sonic 2! But you know, enough of these generic re-releases. At this point, we've covered basically every notable official release of the game. Let's get into some more interesting stuff. Back during Sonic 2's release, Sega was hyping up four versions of the game. There was the 16-bit version, the 8-bit Master System version, the Game Gear version of that, and, uh, wait, what's the fourth one? At some point in the game's development, it appears a Sega CD version of Sonic 2 was also being worked on. This is just like how a CD port of Sonic 1 was also in the talks before being shelved. Just like Sonic 1 CD, Sonic 2 CD was planned to be an extended version of the game with extra content. There really isn't much concrete info on what this version was going to be like, as magazines at the time wrote up some fairly contradictory points as to what it was. This EGM issue had a full write-up about it. 
Sonic 2 on Sega CD. It reads, Here are a few of the fantastic intermissions for the Sonic 2 CD that Sega showed at the summer CES in Chicago. The Sega CD version is said to be almost identical to the cart, but features CD quality music tracks, sound effects, and excellent cartoon-like intermissions. How accurate these claims are is unknown, but it's likely that if a Sega CD version of Sonic 2 did come out, that's close to how it would have gone. Side note about that write-up though, those intermissions? They aren't from Sonic 2 CD. In fact, they're not from any Sonic game project. These come from a tech demo made by the Sega Multimedia Studio, which in 1992 was a newly formed team within Sega of America, made to create CD games. This demo showcases the capabilities of the Sega CD, showing how it can scale and rotate large sprites, and of course, play FMVs. For the time, this was very impressive stuff. It was shown at Summer CES like that magazine said, but these Sonic intermissions were made solely for the demo, and were in no way associated with the Sonic 2 CD project. The demo itself wasn't preserved online until late 2019, when the incredible people over at HiddenPalace.org were able to obtain a copy and dump it online. You might remember them from a certain Sonic 3 prototype. Now we can view the entire demo in all of its glory. For decades, these screenshots from the magazine were all we had, and naturally, they were very mysterious. Now the full demo is out there, and it's a pretty interesting watch. And while this was nothing more than a demo, they did make some nice official cover art for it. Anyway, it's believed that whatever was finished of Sonic 2 CD was scrapped, or maybe reworked into Sonic CD itself, as that game was being developed alongside Sonic 2. Early on, time travel was planned for Sonic 2. It's likely that a lot of the early unused concepts for Sonic 2 were used for Sonic CD. I've always liked how these two games can be seen as sort of parallel sequels to Sonic 1, both going in different directions. It's too bad this was scrapped. It would have been awesome to see a spruced up version of Sonic 2, perhaps with all of its legendary cut content finished. Oh, what could have been. As mentioned before, Sonic 2's development was full of challenges and cut content. This is common with game development, but what makes Sonic 2's development so interesting is that most of what was changed or removed has been well documented throughout the years. This is thanks to both official sources, as well as tons of early builds that have been found and documented online. Prototypes count as versions of the game, right? This is definitely some weird phenomenon with the Sonic series. So many games have early versions that have leaked over the years, Sonic 2 being the most famous example of them. The lead-up to Sonic 2 was full of anticipation and hype. A buzz around the game was so huge, in fact, there was a group of people who risked their livelihoods to get a copy of the game early. At the New York Toy Fair in 1992, the cartridge that was on display was stolen. Why? To be copied and put on bootleg carts, available for sale before the final game, of course. Look, you gotta respect that hustle. What an absolutely crazy story this is. A group of people who either have ties to these bootleggers or are the bootleggers themselves, saw an opportunity to get an early copy of that year's hottest upcoming game, took it, succeeded, and seemingly got away with it. Sometime after the Toy Fair but before the game's official release, copies of Sonic 2 began floating around in Asian markets, and eventually started showing up elsewhere in places like Brazil and Europe. I'm sure those who bought this at the time were surprised to find out that only four zones were playable through normal means, as well as the game having an overall serious lack of polish. This is all because, of course, these early copies used the ROM from that demo. Luckily for Sega, this wasn't very well known when it happened. No one outside of where these were being sold knew Sonic 2 leaked in such a major way. It wasn't even well known online until the late 90s, when a man named Simon Y found the ROM of it on a Chinese GeoCity site and shared it with the Western Sonic community around December of 1998. However, it's believed it was available online for years before then. The ROM Y found was apparently simply titled MD8123. Imagine going through a bunch of untitled ROMs and just finding this. With it now spreading across the community, its discovery immediately sparked the interest of Sonic fans everywhere. How could it not? It's an early version of Sonic 2. Honestly, this ROM being leaked could be attributed as to why Sonic fans are so dedicated to preserving Sonic history. It provided an example. Believed to be from around mid-1992, this build is very different from the final game. It showcases early art, music, zones, everything. Hidden Palace Zone is playable, and even the much more obscure Wood Zone is here. Though, the many differences between these early builds and the final game have been well documented online. So to fit with the rest of this video, let's take a look at some notable pirate releases of Sonic 2. Here's one of my favorites that originated somewhere in Asia. Its cover features assets taken from a 1992 Japanese Mega Drive magazine. And yes, Sonic here does have shaved legs. The box also features a custom logo and early screenshots, and the cartridge label shows the now iconic early title screen. Though, despite looking like a pirate of the prototype, this actually contains the final game, but it is often confused as one of the beta carts. 
Now this one, also originating from Asian territories, actually does contain the Simon Y prototype. In fact, this is probably the one where the ROM from that site came from, and because of that, it's the most desired of the Sonic 2 pirates. The back has a mix of early Sonic 2 screenshots and even some from Sonic 1, with a similar cartridge as the other release. This one has to be my favorite. As funky as that box art is, you can't beat the original. Well, the original bootleg of the Sonic 2 prototype. There are more recent bootlegs that contain this ROM, but this is the source, and that makes it really cool. Forget fame, forget fortune, all I want in my life is an original Simon Wise Sonic 2 cart. But how could one find one of these today? Well, given how legendary these are, they're very hard to find. Bootleg games aren't often made in high quantities, and with something as iconic as the Sonic 2 Beta, yeah, these are pretty demanded. If you can't find the originals though, those later ones are still pretty cool. I would love to find the original copies someday though. It would be incredible to have a collection of these recognizable bootlegs of the game. There are so many throwaway fakes of Sonic 2, but these are truly special. While it's no Simon Y, I recently got this original copy of Sonic Jam 6 for the Mega Drive from a seller in Taiwan. This is the first print of the game, not a copy, making it way cooler. The same thing could be said for these Sonic 2 carts. With bootleg games, there are usually a ton of later releases that just aren't as special. This is because they're usually not by the original developers. This copy of Samari is just a cheap re-release. The real gem is the original copy with this box. These? They're bootlegs of bootlegs. Yes, these are still unofficial, but at this point, they're historical, and make for super unique parts of a collection. We're not quite done yet, as there are still more early versions of the game to talk about. The Simon Y build is the most iconic, but there have been many, and I mean many, pre-release builds of the game that have leaked online since its release. Not a single early build of Sonic 1 has surfaced, but Sonic 2 is a completely different story. There are over a dozen distinctly unique pre-release builds of the game that have been documented online so far, though some are more interesting than others. The one that really rivals the Simon Y build in terms of popularity would be the fabled Nick Arcade prototype. In 1992, Nickelodeon aired a video game themed game show, where the contestants competed in various challenges across various games. Some of the games featured were upcoming releases, and one of those games was Sonic the Hedgehog 2. In this episode, you see a young Melissa Joan Hart playing, where she had to collect 25 rings in the given time. They failed to do so, but that's not what's really interesting. Look at all the differences here! This build can be roughly dated to around late 1991 to early 1992. This is as primitive as Sonic 2 gets. Since this one was actually shown on TV and had tons of clear differences, it became very popular. And lucky for us, a cartridge very similar if not identical to the one used on the show was dumped in 2006, released by DRX. DRX is a legend in the game prototype preservation scene. He's actually behind the Hidden Palace website and has uncovered so much over the years. DRX purchased the prototype for $1,500, using money gathered through community donations, and released it for all to enjoy on November 7, 2006. This is the earliest known build of Sonic 2, and as such, it's full of oddities. Tails is present but is deactivated in normal play. This could be because in this build, when he gets hurt, you lose your rings. Obviously, this would cause complications with the whole get 25 rings challenge of Nick Arcade, assuming this build was made with the show in mind. Sonic 2 was actually built off of Sonic 1, and this is very clear here. The levels still use Sonic 1 music, and the level select is identical to the one seen in that game. Technically speaking, Sonic 2 is a ROM hack of Sonic 1. Hidden Palace Zone is present in this build, showing how early it was worked on. Green Hill Zone is left over from Sonic 1, though its collision is completely messed up. Hilltop Zone crashes the game, making Emerald Hill the only zone that's beatable. Here's the cartridge of the Nick Arcade prototype. Check out that slick holographic label! This was once considered to be the label for all final copies of Sonic 2, but it was unfortunately deemed too expensive to mass produce. Here's one last footnote regarding Nick Arcade. The pilot episode for the show was recorded in early 1991, and that episode features an early build of Sonic 1. It's nothing crazy like the Tokyo Toy Show demo, but this is certainly an earlier build of the game. As for other early Sonic 2 builds, we have an alpha build which is dated August 21st, a pre-beta build dated September 14th, and a really cool one known as the Sensor build. As the story goes, this one was dumped and posted online by the group Sensor back on, believe it or not, November 9th, 1992. This one was also leaked before the game officially came out, though it was discarded back then as soon as a final ROM of the game appeared online. Since it was released so early and was discarded so quickly, it was lost to time and wasn't rediscovered until, again, the good folks at Hidden Palace unearthed it and released it in 2019. Those later ones are pretty much more of the same, with many of these later ones simply being titled Beta 4, Beta 5, etc. These were all made during the same two weeks of development, they're not all that interesting, as they're all pretty close to the final game. 
Beta 5 was the first one to feature the final title screen. Beta 6 was the first to feature a mostly implemented supersonic. Beta 7 has the final stage select screen, and this change with the Mystic Cave Pit between Beta 4 and Beta 5 is pretty funny. But basically, all you need to know is that basically all there is to know about Select 2's development has been documented online. And that is pretty incredible. And there you have it. A look at how many times Sega have repackaged and sold you the same game the second time around. Sonic 2 is almost as iconic as Sonic 1, so it makes sense they re-release it so often as well. My favorite classic Sonic game always goes between 2 and 3, but in terms of behind the scenes stuff and just having a really fascinating history, Sonic 2 is king. This game really was such a feat for all behind it, and it's no surprise we're still finding out new stuff about it to this day. It's a testament to how much this game really means to its fans. The fact that the team was able to create such an incredible game in so little time, and on top of that have this much to discuss, speaks volumes of its staying power and legacy. We'll no doubt continue to see re-releases of this game for as long as Sonic is around. And yes, the constant re-releases might seem like a little much, but come on, it's Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I'll always look forward to experiencing this game in new and exciting ways for as long as they come.